of all the forms of wrong speech, idle chatter is the hardest to get past. But it also seems the most innocent for, to most people. That's one of the reasons why it's hard to get past, after all. A little social grease is not bad. But as with grease in an engine, if you get too much, it mucks up the engine. It gets so it can't run. And the very nature of idle chatter is you open your mouth and you find out what's going to come out. You don't think very carefully about your intention, about why you're saying this, what's going to accomplish. And that's a bad habit to develop if you're trying to become a meditator, both in terms of trying to get the mind into concentration and just learning how to watch your own mind. If you used to just talk all day, then the time, when the time comes to sit and meditate, the mind says, hey, I've been churning out thoughts all day, why stop now? It's in the habit. And if you don't look carefully at your intentions, you miss one of the main aspects of social life as a Dharma practitioner, is being very careful about what you are going to say and what you're going to do. Think it through, then open your mouth, or then go into action. After all, this is part of the Buddha's instructions to Rahula. Before you say anything, ask yourself, what's going to happen as a result of this? Am I going to be harmed? Is someone else going to be harmed? Are we both going to be harmed? Only when it passes that test can you open your mouth and say what you wanted to say. And what makes the, the test a little bit more specific in another sutta, when he's talking to Prince, the Prince had been set up to ask the Buddha a trick question. Would the Buddha ever say anything unpleasant? The idea being if the Buddha said, yes, he would say something unpleasant, then the prince could say, well, what's the difference between you and ordinary people out there in the world? And if the Buddha said he wouldn't say anything unpleasant, he was on record of having said things critical of Devadatta that Devadatta didn't like. So the prince asked the question, and the Buddha said, that's not the sort of question that deserves a categorical answer, and it deserves an analytical answer. And the prince realized that the Buddha had gotten out of the trap. And the analytical answer was this. If something was true and beneficial and timely, then the Buddha would say it. If it was true but not beneficial, or true but not timely, or true and beneficial but not timely, he wouldn't say it. That's three checkpoints you have to go past if you want your speech to be in line with the Dharma. It's not the case that simply talking about Dharma is Dharmic conversation or discussion of the Dharma as we chanted just now, which is a blessing. There are a lot of ignorant things being said about the Dharma, and you'd want to mess up what people's minds with your ignorance. One time when I was first staying with John Fu, he overheard me saying something to another monk where I was trying to explain a point of Dharma. I said, I think it's like this. And John Fu said, if you don't really know, they don't say anything. And in John Lee's analysis, if you're saying a, talking about a level of Dharma that is over the heads of your listeners, that too counts as idle chatter. So you've got to be very careful before you open your mouth, especially here. We have a lot of people here right now, a lot of mouths. We want to make sure that we don't get in one another's way of finding a sense of seclusion, a sense of peace inside. So it's a good lesson in being a good friend as a meditator, is being very careful about when you open your mouth. There's an old expression that silence is golden, so if you're going to open your mouth, you might have something better than gold. Now we, we can live here with a lot of people, and still everybody has a good chance to find the right atmosphere to practice. And we ourselves benefit by being careful about our speech. Because one of the elements of practice is verbal fabrication, the things we talk to ourselves about. That's one of the elements of the first jhana. And so if you can get some good control over the way you talk to yourself, 
as you go through the day, then it's a lot easier to talk to yourself about the right things as the mind settles down. In fact, this is the whole reason why we have precepts and why we live together as we practice. You notice in the way the monk's life is set up, the monks can't go off and be hermits, growing their own food, fixing their own food. They have to have contact at least once a day if they're going to eat with somebody. And both sides are supposed to benefit. In canon has a passage where the Buddha has been staying with a group of monks who have been getting into arguments. He decides to get out and have some peace and quiet. First he visits a group of three monks. They talk about their life together. They're living in the forest together. And every five days they have a Dharma discussion. Aside from that, they try to keep their speech to an absolute minimum. Now the Buddha did say that observing a, a vow of no speaking at all is living like dumb sheep and dumb cattle. Because of course what happens when you're not talking to anybody is just you're in your own little world. You can start saying some pretty crazy things to yourself. So it's good to have a certain amount of talking to maintain your bearings. But you have to keep it under wraps. You have to keep it within bounds. And if you're going to say something, it has to be something that's just necessary in the work of the day. Or something that's actually necessary to say to somebody else. Or something that might be helpful. But yeah, you hear, even here you have to be careful. Hold on to the principle that the less said, the better. And think of the Ajans in Thailand. They tended to be people of few words, not because they didn't have much to say. There were times when I was at the John Fung and a question would come up and he could talk you know, for a whole hour about it. But that was rare. Most times a question came up, he'd have a quick answer. Because he had to learn how to be quick with his own mind. When the defilements come up, they don't sit and listen to long lectures. You have to get right to the heart of the matter. So learning how to be a person of few words is a, a good habit to develop as a Dharma practitioner. It's good for you, it's good for the people around you. It's good for you to develop appropriate attention. In other words, asking yourself, when I'm going to do this, when I'm going to say this, is it really worthwhile? Is it really going to be helpful or harmful? And it makes you an admirable friend to other people. And those two qualities, appropriate attention and admirable friendship, Buddha said are the most important internal and external qualities for getting your first takes of awakening. So we try to make our life here the kind of life that is helpful for one another's awakening. We don't want to have the karma of being an obstacle. So practice right speech, both inside and outside. And the more you practice it outside, in other words, being very careful about what you say and thinking about the consequences, and thinking about where your speech is coming from. And the easier it will be to practice it inside. As you develop this habit of seeing when something comes up in the mind, where is it coming from, where is it going? That's when you see things in line with the Dharma.